hello welcome to my channel my name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily where I talk about all of the knitting and cross stitch that I have worked on over the past week or so uh, today is November 30th 2020 you will be seeing this on the 1st of December how in the world is it December I don't know it's insane anyways you have joined me late in the evening I'm recording really late today I had a very busy day, so I should be able to get this up in time, though. You'll know if it's up at 10 a.m. Eastern time, I guess. I'm rambling now. Anyways, there are two places that you can find me on the internet. The first is on Instagram at birch.and.lily, and the second is on Ravelry at Birch and Lily. This is a cross-stitch episode this week, so let's just jump right in. I have a decent amount of things that I have worked on over the past two weeks. So my first project is in a bag from the Sagan Stitch. It's this beautiful wood panel print. It is quilted as well, which I love. So this pattern that I'm working on is in one of the books by Blackbird Designs. You can find it in Home for the Holidays. Uh, da, 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 da. I guess I don't have to show. I will have a picture up on the screen, of course. And I am working on Christmas Garden. So... I think I showed this not last episode but the episode before I could be wrong doesn't matter anyways I am stitching this up on 40 count sheep straw and I am using all of the called for threads and that is where I am so since the last time I pulled it out I have got a little bit further down this way and added these pretty berries up there it's a fun project um, I have a couple things that I've really really been enjoying the past couple weeks so this one didn't get as much work but I just needed something a little different something Christmassy one day this week and this is what I ended up pulling out so yeah not much to say about that because I'm just working away on the border I haven't decided if I'm going to fully do the whole border on it or do like page finishes I've kind of been enjoying page finishes I've been doing that on a couple projects and something about it is really satisfying so I think that is what I'll go for and I might as well show you the threads this project is really simple on the thread end of things so there's only four colors which I really or three colors nope there's four and I really like that so making for a fun project for sure okay next we have another Christmassy themed project I guess this one's more winter than Christmas I have it in a very non-winter bag from the pretty southern this is let it snow bungalow a pattern by hands-on design and yeah I've put a decent amount of work into this one actually I can only really work on it in the daytime because for some reason I have all of my odd lights up here um, I do have a little headlamp but I I don't know it's been hurting my head lately so I haven't been using that so I can really only work on this in the daylight because it is on black fabric again I am using all of the call for threads for this project really simple colors for this one as well and I'm stitching this up on 28 count black joblin um, as you all know if you've been watching me for a while I do prefer 40 count but for stitching on this black 28 count is just perfect because I can see the holes really well I don't even know if they make a 40 count black to be honest but that is what I'm stitching on is 28 count and this is what I have done so I think since last time I filled in this second snowman's hat I've done a lot of work on the house and yeah I think that's about what I've got done it's so much fun to work on and I don't know <laughs> oh is that a th yeah okay never mind um I thought I had a loose thread but um compared to working on the 40 count it feels like it's flying just because the stitches are so much bigger um not that I don't still love my 40 count but I don't know something about this is fun so this is part of a series there is one for every season I have summer and fall done so I just have this winter one to finish and what does that leave spring spring is the final one I have to finish so I'm looking forward to that I'm having a hard time finding the same fabric though because um, Priscilla and Chelsea of stitching with the housewives have been releasing so many beautiful chalkboard designs which I'm not complaining about 
but it means the fabric's out of stock all the time, so I've been keeping my eyes out, hoping I can find some. Um, I might be able to squeeze the last one out of the scraps from this, but it would be pretty iffy on the margins, and I would just rather have extra fabric around it when I'm finishing just in case, so I will continue to keep my eyes out for it, I guess, and see what turns up. I am sitting a little bit closer to the mic this time. I hope it's easier for you guys to hear. I'm still getting used to this new mic. It's hands-free, but that means that, I don't know, it doesn't pick up, it picks up sound, but it doesn't pick it up the same way my other mic did, so I'm still getting used to it. Hopefully the sound will be better this time. Um, anyways, next project. So this is basically what all of my attention has been going to the past couple weeks for cross stitch. Um, Another pretty southern bag. This is a Savior's Praise. It's a pattern by Shakespeare's Peddler. And what am I doing? I'm stitching this up with all of the called for threads, and I believe this fabric is called for as well. It is 40 count beach brew. So here's an idea of all of the colors. Really pretty. And the pattern uses them in such a unique way, I guess is the best way to put it. So it definitely, I think that's why it's been catching my eye a lot. Lots of color changes, but hard to not keep it interesting because of that. So that is where I am. I have gone and done this green border. So now I basically know where the other edge of the project is. And I am going to cut this fabric because it is huge. I have a lot of extra fabric, as you can tell. So I am going to after I finish recording this, cut that fabric so that I don't have as much to work around when I'm stitching. So yeah, that's the edge there where this green is, where this end of patience is also shows the edge. So I think I have enough to work off of to cut a nice straight line. Um, otherwise, I've been doing a lot of words. Um, like I finished love and the words above it there. All of those words in here I've worked on. I'm trying to get my second page finished. The first page is finished except for a couple initials, but I haven't decided what I want to do for those. So I'm calling it a page finish anyways. So I'm trying to get the second page finished. And then the final page is a little bit smaller of a page. So there's not as much to do on there. I think it cuts off. Well, maybe it is a full page. I think it cuts off right after the O in love. But I've really, really been loving this. Um, and it's definitely been getting most of my attention. I've been having a hard time figuring out what I want to bring with me to work on around Christmas time. And even though this takes up a little bit more space, I guess it'll take up less when I cut the extra fabric off. Um, but I think this is definitely going to be one of the projects that I bring. I've just been loving samplers lately, so this has caught a lot of love and it will continue to get a lot of love. I guess this is the other project too that I've been enjoying working on that isn't Christmas or winter. Everything else is kind of in that theme realm. So maybe that's why I like this too. I don't know. It's just been what I've been picking up. Okay. I worked on a lot of stuff this week. I did a lot of jumping around other than working on that. So I still have, I think three more projects to show you guys. So let's keep going. This project, the bag always makes me laugh because I was running short on project bags and all I had left was a fall one and this is a very Christmas project. So this is Jenny Bean's Christmas Sampler. It's a pattern by Shakespeare's Peddler and it's in a fall bag. Anyways, I am stitching this up with all of the call for threads and I am using 40 count mallow. If you are new here, mallow is probably my favorite 40 count fabric. It's a beautiful neutral color, but it's also very reasonably priced because it is half linen, half cotton. So the feel is a little bit more different. It's a little more stiff, but it definitely, once you warm it up with your hands, it gets just as nice as linen. Um, but it's really reasonably priced, so I can stitch more things. So this is on Mallow, and yeah, here are all of the called for threads. I think I had said last episode, but I will say again, if you end up stitching this project, I don't know if I would go for the overdyes unless you had them in your stash because you use so little of all of them. 
but it kind of seems like a waste. I feel like I could have got away with DMC. But they're pretty and it is what it is. So this project does not have much movement on it since last time because I found a nice big mistake. Um, which I've slowly been ripping out, but I really needed a break from ripping out. So I think last time the house wasn't finished and I did finish up the house. Um, but then I noticed in here that one of these leaves was off. So I have to rip, I think, all of this stuff here out. Everything else is counted perfectly fine, thank goodness. Um, but these leaves are off and I just don't want to have to sit and fudge the whole rest of the pattern just because of them being off one stitch and it's not too much to pull out so these need to come out and it's kind of been sitting in purgatory since I realized that. Maybe I'll work on it tonight. But I'm really enjoying this. I love how cute and tiny and delicate it looks on the 40 count. Um, I think, I don't know if the pattern has a set called for fabric. Oh no, it does call for a 40 count. Um, when I had first originally started this was when I really liked stitching on 32 count, which I don't anymore. So I had started this on a 32 count and that's probably why it feels so small now on the 40 count. But I'm really enjoying it. The colors are so unique and beautiful and, okay, a little closer. It's just super cute. So yeah, I need to get that pulled out before I do anything else. I know if I don't pull it out, I'll just keep setting it aside, so I really need to do that. But beautiful pattern, really, really enjoy it. If you want something small and quick that's Christmassy, I think that would be a really good one to try. I have no idea how my knitting episodes can go so long and these grass stitch ones just seem to fly. I guess there's less to talk about. Like knitting, you've got all the needle sizes and stitch counts and all that, and this is kind of just like, here's my fabric, here's my floss, this is what I did. It's still fun to record. And even if no one else likes it, I do. So two more projects. This next one is not Christmas themed. So that's a little break in the episode, I guess. I absolutely love the bag this is in. This is another one from Pretty Southern. Florals are like my favorite project bag fabric ever. Um, this pattern is unfortunately a discontinued pattern, but you can definitely still find it different places on the internet. I've seen it on stash unloads, I've seen it on eBay, I found mine on a stash unload, so you can definitely find it if you really really want it. Um, this pattern is Birds of a Feather, it's a pattern by With Thy Needle and Thread, you may also know them as Brenda Gervais. I am using all of the Call For Threads again, ooh, I'm using all of the Call For Threads for this project as well. I think this might be one I bring with me at Christmas too. It's not too big, um, and I still have quite a bit left to do on it, so I wouldn't have to worry about finishing it and then having to carry back a finished product. I guess that's not a problem, but anyways, I'm stitching this up on 40 Count Vintage Grey. Um, it's not what the pattern calls for. It's just something I had in my stash, but here we go. So <laughs> this is another project that I had to rip stuff out of. Um, last time I think I almost had this whole second row of alphabets done and I had to tear them all out because they were off one stitch. So it doesn't really look like there's a lot of progress on this, but I ripped out a whole row of letters and then started it again. So there's some progress. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't even know how I got one stitch off and then didn't notice for the rest of the letters because I usually was counting... No, I guess I wasn't counting off of the letters above, I was counting off of the ones beside. And now I've started making sure that I count off of the letters above so that I don't make that big mistake again. But this pattern is absolutely beautiful. Um, I can never find a good quality photo of it, so let me pull out the pattern itself so that I can show you guys. Because the one that I've put up, I just don't like the quality of it, it's not great. So that is what the finished project looks like. Super cute sheep, and there's a lot of solid stitching, but really, really cute. I love the blue that the birds are. It just stands out so nice. So yeah, 
think this will go in my Christmas pile. I always overpack for traveling. I think everyone does if they're a crafter, but I don't know. I always feel like my backpack is just bulging with stuff and really, really heavy. And then my husband's backpack that he brings on the plane is like totally empty and mostly full of dog toys. Because my dog flies with us. I don't. Anyways, I'd rather have more than not enough, right? I don't think it's a bad thing. At least cross stitch is flat because knitting takes up a lot more space. So I think I can get away with taking a lot of cross stitch and maybe just a couple knitting things. I don't know. I'm gonna have a hard time deciding. Anyways, this final project is in an actual Christmas themed bag. This one just made me die laughing. I don't know. Something about these little cats is hilarious but and then the inside if I can show it to you without showing the pattern off um, the inside has these cute little mice so sweet another pretty southern bag I got this last year so I'm not sure if she has this fabric anymore um, this is Lantern Lane a pattern by Little House Needleworks I am using all of the call for cottons the pattern also has an option for silks um, but I'm too cheap for silks, so I'm using cottons. <laughs> and this is another project that I'm stitching up on 40 count mallow. This was another one that I didn't have much done. I had started it on 32 count, realized I liked 40 better, and figured I'm just going to start it on mallow. So, there we have it. Let me see if I can fold this so I don't have to cover my face so much. There we go. So that is what I have done. Um... I think I got pretty much all the alphabet done from last time. I think I may have only had a letter or two the last time I showed this. Um, but yeah, alphabets fly. I'm loving alphabets lately. I don't know. They go so fast that they're really fun. I like getting them done at the beginning and then it's all the other cute stuff after that. Not that the alphabets aren't fun, but. So yeah, that's done little chickadee or not chickadee cardinal this little cardinal is done and then this is a flower underneath I will say it's a little hard to see on the mallow with the call for thread um, the pattern calls for eggshell but I'm just gonna leave it I think once I get everything else around it in and the center of the flower is supposed to be red I think it will be fine so I'm not terribly concerned if anything it'll just look like a snowflake coming out of a pot so um, but yeah that's Lantern Lane not tons to share about that either but fun little pattern if you're starting out cross stitch and you want something simple I would highly recommend stuff from Lantern Lane or Country Cottage Needleworks. They're really cute, um, but they're very easy. No fancy stitches, anything like that. So this is a really cute one as well. But that brings me to the end of everything I've worked on the past two weeks. I, looking at all of that, I think I got more done than I realized, which is exciting. Um, but yeah. I never know what to say at the end of these. Um, it's snowing outside today. We're getting our first snow. I'm kind of excited about that. Um, I think it's going to stick around. Uh, we were eating supper and the ground was definitely staying white. So the snow is here. It's almost Christmas. Crazy, crazy. Getting close to finishing all my Christmas projects. So I have three socks and a hat left all things which I added on after I said I was basically done my Christmas presents, but that's okay. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new, I appreciate you watching all the way through. Um, and if you're not, of course, I appreciate you if you're coming back as well. It means so much to me. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And also hitting the like button and ringing that little bell down below. It helps me out a lot. And it lets you know when I have new videos coming. I do upload new videos every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. On that note, I will... I'll announce it this episode and my knitting episode just in case people don't watch this. 
but I think for the rest of the Christmas season I'm going to start maybe not next week but the following week um, I'm going to start doing more of like a vlog style podcast video for the remainder of the holiday season um, so I will still be showing you what I'm working on but I'm not going to be doing like a sit down in front of my lights format I'll just film kind of throughout the week showing you what I'm working on and then pop it all together in a video so there will still be videos every Tuesday just a slightly different format um, so hopefully that is okay with you guys but yeah that is all I have to say thank you so much again for joining me and I hope I'll see you next week bye mm -hmm.